Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Jim Brady, and as chairman of the Hogan for Governor campaign, I'd like to welcome all of you to this very special event. Governor Christie is here. The next governor of Maryland is here. What an opportunity. In addition to welcoming you, I want to thank you all for all that you've done to make our campaign the success that it's been. Without your support and without your help, there is no way we would be in the position we are now. And that position is, this is a very winnable race. It is a very, very exciting time. So thank you for all that you've done. Now. Let me introduce someone who's going to introduce our very special guest. You all know Larry Hogan as the person who has led the crusade to return Maryland to economic viability. You also know him as the person who is passionately committed to making Maryland a place where people want to be, not a place where they can't afford to be. That is what this campaign is all about. I would tell you that to me, when I think of Larry Hogan, what he is to me, he is the next governor of the state of Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. The uh, Secretary Jim Brady, he is the, uh, the, the former Secretary of Business and Economic Development for the state, and he's the only guy in Maryland who chaired the transition team for two governors, both a Democrat and a Republican. He's going to do it again after this November. Jim Brady, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I want to uh, thank the, the, the next First Lady, Yumi Hogan. Let me say hi to her real quick. Where'd she go? Welcome, Yumi. Here she is. I want to especially uh, thank our guests who were in the round table here that, uh, that really helped raise a lot of money and contributed a lot of money to spend a little time with the governor. I want to thank each and every one of you for, uh, for joining us this morning. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your help. Um, we have some great news for you uh, this morning before I introduce the governor. We got some poll results back. And in spite of, in spite of a month of millions of dollars in negative advertising, a barrage by the Democratic Governors Association and my opponent just saying the most vile things you can imagine about us, uh, our numbers are going up, his are going down, and this race is a dead heat for governor for the first time. time since my friend Bob Ehrlich was elected in November of 2002. We're within the margin of error. We have a great chance to win this race. Um, it, it, the Democratic Governors Association knows it, which is why they're spending all that money, and the Republican Governors Association knows it, which is why my friend Governor Chris Christie is here with us this morning. I can't tell you how proud I am to have the governor with us. Uh, it means a lot to me. I'm a huge fan of Governor Christie. He did in New Jersey exactly what we have to do here in Maryland. You know, his state is an overwhelmingly Democratic state overwhelming majorities in both houses of the legislature. When he decided to run for governor in 2009, really a lot of people didn't believe he could do it. Yeah. Right? Is that right, Gov? That is right. And it's exactly the kind of thing we faced here. But guess what? He not only went on and won that race for governor and surprised a lot of people, he's done a fantastic job as governor. He's reached out to constituencies that Republicans don't usually do very well with, racked up some huge numbers, and was just reelected last year in a landslide victory. My friend, the next go the governor of the state of New Jersey, the chairman of the RGA, Chris Christie. Thank you so much. smart people in this state who are going to tell you, have told you already, and are going to tell you over the next 48 days that Larry can't win. And I am here to tell you that if that were true, if that were true, then we wouldn't have a two-term Republican governor in the state of New Jersey either, and we do. And you can have one too. Right here you know, I, I said to, to Larry earlier that uh, the fact is that nobody 
Nobody thinks you're gonna win until after you do it. <laughs> Except for those people who are the closest to you around you who believe in you. Um, that's this group of people uh, who believe in Larry personally, believe in the message he's bringing for Maryland, and believe that, you know, Maryland needs some significant change. Now, all of you know that I don't have the warmest relationship with your current governor. Uh, <laughs> he's kind of don't like me all that much, and, and, uh, and listen, I'm a loving person, as you probably know, um, and so I, I try as hard as I can to be nice to Martin, um, but I just can't do it. Uh, I can't. And, and seeing him depart the stage is half of what I want for Maryland. The other half is sitting right in front of me. I want Larry Hogan to be the next governor. And there's no reason why you want a third O'Malley term. And that's exactly what the lieutenant governor would be. He'd be a third O'Malley term. You don't want that. You don't need that. And everything that he said he's been responsible for in this state has been a disaster, as far as I can tell. He's apparently responsible for the implementation of Obamacare. What a great job he did there. He's apparently in charge of economic development and job growth in the state, another fabulous job by the Lieutenant Governor. Why should we promote someone who in the job they had is already shown to be a failure? And that's gotta be the message from here on out. Now, let me tell you the reason I'm here. I got accosted by some reporters outside of my way in. They said, Governor, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here because this is a winnable race. And I said to the folks inside, my biggest problem right now as the RGA chairman is an embarrassment of riches. Just think about what's happening, and that's what's going to give you even more confidence when we get win here in Maryland. We are winning right now in Connecticut. We are winning in Illinois. We are winning in Hawaii. 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 And we're five points up in Hawaii right now. Um, we are within one point in Massachusetts. We're within one point in New Hampshire. We are winning by four points in Maine. Something's happening here, everybody. And when something happens across the country like this, when people understand the difference between our two parties and what that will mean for the future of your state and our country, we should ride that wave. And when you have somebody that's as good and decent as Larry, then you have the chance to ride that wave. You don't have a good candidate, by the way, none of this matters. In the end, it's all about the candidates. If you have a good candidate, you got a chance. If you don't, believe me, they will blow themselves up. Oh, 48 days to go, you've got a candidate that has stood the test of fire from the other side, and is not only standing, is rising. That's a really good sign. And so when the reporters asked me why I'm here, they said, well, Governor, there's a two to one registration disadvantage in Maryland. I said, you're telling that to somebody from New Jersey? <laughs> Are you kidding? They got 750,000 more Democrats than Republicans in New Jersey. We haven't elected a Republican to the United States Senate in New Jersey in 42 years. When I ran for governor in 2009, we hadn't elected any Republican statewide in a dozen years. Everyone's gonna tell you why it can't happen. Yet here I am, here I am. 49% of the vote in a three-way race in 2009. They all said I was a creation of John Corzine. But John Corzine was just so bad that I was just the last good guy standing. And like in four years, they would wipe me out and take me away. Well, four years of conservative policies, four years of reaching out like Larry's doing to constituencies that no normally vote our way, and going to see those constituencies, and not talking, listening, listening to them giving them a seat at the table, letting them know that their opinions, their points of view are respected. What happened four years later? 61% of the vote for re-election, 51% of the Hispanic vote in our state, we won the Hispanic vote, 27% of the African-American vote up from 9% four years earlier. And for all of those folks who say that Republicans have a gender gap, the right Republicans don't. I ran against a female Democrat state senator who had been in the state senate for 18 years. And I won 56% of the female vote in New Jersey. She got 43%. There was a gender gap in New Jersey in 2013. She had it. She had it. And it can happen here. And Larry Hogan is the guy to do it. 
First thing you need if you want to reach out to people that have not voted for us before is humility, and he's got it. He doesn't claim to have every answer, but he knows what he believes in, and he's willing to listen to others and bring people together. Boy, we need that as a party, don't we? We need to bring our party together, and we need to bring the people who are outside of our party together with us to govern. Compromise is not a dirty word, everybody, and neither is consensus building. That's not a dirty phrase either. And we need to get back to that as Republicans, and Larry Hogan is the guy who can do it. And so I'm down here because uh, I'm a mercenary, everybody, for the Republican Party. I don't go places where we can't win. I just don't. I don't have enough t hours in the day to go to places just to be nice to somebody. So don't think I came down here today just because Larry Hogan's a nice guy and I thought, well, what the heck, why not? <laughs> I gotta run out of here, get on a plane, and go to New Hampshire after this. I'm here because we can win. The RGA is the most successful political organization in America because we are mercenaries. We invest in those places where we can win. We don't invest in lost causes, we don't pay for landslides. We go where we can make a difference. I'm here today, and that's what I'm telling the press and everybody else, I'm here today because we're here to win in Maryland. And I didn't think we could win three months ago. I'll be honest with you, I didn't. Three months ago I thought, oh, and a bunch of other places I gotta look. But I'll tell you, you all have been kept on me. The chairwoman, Lewis, all kept on me. This is getting closer, Governor. Take a look, take a look. They got my attention. You got a great candidate who got my attention. You have great leaders in your party who are relentless. Let me tell you, they are relentless. They've stayed on me, but in a good way. To say, don't miss this opportunity, Governor. We got a chance to win here. So here's what we need to do from here on out. I have to raise more money, because Maryland's not my budget, so I gotta go raise more money. And that's what I intend to go and try and do over the next 48 days. Take advantage of all those opportunities I have, including this one, and you all have to help him raise more money, okay? I would love to tell you there's a whole bunch of different ways to win this thing, that's rule one. We gotta give him the money to be able to communicate his message. What we've seen is their message isn't working. And his can. And when he's been up and doing what he's doing on television, people like him, they believe in him, and they're willing to give him a listen. I tell you everybody, you do not want to wake up on November 5th, having had a really narrow loss here, and think to yourself, man, in Maryland we lost by this much. We should have done more. I wish I would have done more. I wish I would have gone to some of my friends and my coworkers and my relatives or my neighbors and gotten them to help and contribute to Larry. If I had, maybe you could have had another week of TV on there that could have made a big difference in the DC market or in the Baltimore market. You could have done more. Don't be in that position on November 5th. I'm going out there now to work to make sure I'm not in that position. That I don't have to second guess whether or not I did the right thing here or not. You need to do the same thing. Let's do it together. You help him. I'll go out and work hard to try to raise more money so I can help him. And then we're going to be in a spot to be able to say we changed history. Because believe me, believe me, it will be an earthquake here. <laughs> an earthquake here. And Larry Hogan wins on November 5th. <laughs> the last thing I'll tell you, which I said inside there, that Larry knows is true. When he wins on November 4th, he will have hundreds of people who will say to him, man, I knew it, Larry, I knew it. <laughs> Baby, I could feel it. I knew you were special, you're a genius. You are a political superstar, Larry, we knew it all along. Let me tell you who Larry is, he's gonna appreciate that, because we all appreciate having nice things said about us. But let me tell you who he's gonna remember, the people in this room. Because I can tell you back in 2009, that's who I remember. All the great things that's happened to me since then, all the attention that I've gotten, it's all wonderful, but let me tell you, I remember the people who were in that room in 09, when no one could figure out a way how a Republican could win in New Jersey again, and they said, we don't care, we believe in you, we're writing you a check. We're putting up the lawn signs, we're going door to door, we're putting ourselves out there. Those are the people to this day I remember. And when I'm at some event, there's a lot more people with them now, but those are the ones who get the special hug. Those are the ones who I whisper in there and say, from the beginning, baby, from the beginning. And that's what the people in this room are gonna feel like on the evening of November 4th. Because believe me, there'll be all kinds of national media here then, there'll be all kinds of people crowded into that campaign party who will all have 
they'll be scrounging, looking for the Hogan stuff that they <laughs> pretended to have before, that they're gonna have now, right? They're all gonna be doing that, but the people in the room who he's gonna notice when he's standing behind a podium like this as the governor-elect of Maryland are gonna be the people in this room. And you all have it within your power to make the difference here, you do. He's right, this is a margin of error race. It is within our grasp. You can make it happen. What you did today is enormously helpful, and I know he appreciates it, and I do. But guess what, here's the bad news. Success begets more responsibility. And you need to do more. You need to do more for the state party, you need to do more for Larry. I'm sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Larry can't say that. You know, he's, got, he's friends with all of you, I'm saying it. I'm saying it, you gotta do more. You gotta grab some more people and get them to have your enthusiasm and believe like we believe that this guy can win this race. If you get him the resources he needs, I tell you, he's gonna win this thing. That's the variable that's left. They already know this lieutenant governor. If this race was gonna be a blowout, it would be already. They decided they're not sure. They don't think so. Now it's our job to say, you're not sure about him? Take a look at this guy. And we put that message out there, we're gonna win this thing. I'm proof of it, I'm telling you, I'm living proof of it, and you have to believe. So that's why I'm here. Believe. Believe and do the work that's necessary over the next 48 days. So when you wake up on November 5th, you have no second thoughts, no second guessing, no regret. That's all useless come November 5th. Feel the regret now. Feel how that feels now. And you say, no, I don't like that, let me go work some more. That's what we need to do. And he deserves it. Because when very few people, except the people in this room believed, he believed, his wife believed, and they put themselves <laughs> out there and fought the fight. The 48 days left to fight. He's gonna do it, you know he will. I wanna be here to help you. I'm gonna be back. We're gonna make sure that we do what we need to do here to try to help him win. And I need you to do it too. So, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming today and for showing your enthusiasm. I know it means a great deal to him. I can tell when I walk into a room now, I, this is my 33rd state <laughs> that I've been to since December 1st. 33rd state. And so I've seen lots of candidates. Governors <laughs> running for re-election and challengers. And you can tell when you walk into a room and a challenger isn't feeling so good or a governor's not feeling so good. And you can tell when you walk into a room and they believe, he believes. He had a big smile, he had a twinkle in his eye, he had lots he wanted to tell me, he was enthusiastic. You can tell when a candidate's starting to feel it. Now he feels it, and that's the first step towards winning, to believe yourself that it's possible. So you all helped to make him feel that way by being here today and by contributing and raising the money you have. Now we need to double that feeling. We need to double that feeling for him. And if you do, then he's gonna win this race. So. Um, I had Sam, where's Sam? Oh, there you go. Sam, by the way, is the smartest guy in the world. Sam did what everyone was saying nice things, and Larry's saying great nice things about me. That's all really good, but Sam's a smart one. Sam's like, Governor, respectfully, um, when you come back, <laughs> Sam was not letting me out of the room <laughs> until I said I'd come back for Larry Hogan. So here's the deal. Get to work. I'm gonna work with Larry's campaign. And I'm gonna keep my word to Sam. I'm gonna come back to Maryland, because Sam, you know, pins me up against the wall on it. Perfect. He pins me up against the wall on it. We're ready. Uh -huh. Hey Sam, so you guys do what you need to do. I'll work with Larry's campaign. Let's let the Democrats in this state know that the cavalry is coming over the hill from New Jersey. All right? And let's go, let's go win this thing, everybody. Thank you very much.
gentlemen, one more round of applause for Governor Chris Christie. Thank you so much.